Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's OpenS setup, we'll be taking on the new debuffed Tommy's Matchbook and seeing how well it works in Void 3.0. The following weapon is now able to apply Scorch when overheated, and this alone allows it to synergize a lot better with solar subclass aspects and fragments. However, we will be using Void subclass instead because of how much better survivability the subclass can offer for the user using Tommy's. And if you go ahead and use the build like shown, then you can get constant debuff application, increased scorch damage, non-stop devour on demand, and flexible mods to use. We'll also be using Dawn Chorus for the mix to enhance the scorch damage applied, which is both crazy, big brain, and something you may have seen me do before. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void, where defeating the target with Void abilities activate Devour. Then you want Child of the Old Gods, where upon crafting a Rift, you can cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back Grenade, Midi, Class Ability, and Health for the user. The plan here is going to be the same as when we did the Sanguine build a while back. As both Tommy's and Touch of Malice effects our overall health, we will be using both Devour and Child of the Old Gods to counteract the negative effects. Both of these aspects are incredible with helping the user survive for much longer in stressful situations, and while solar healing is also good on paper, a void is more practical for the users without the need of fully specking into a fragment or use of healing grenades. A fragments used are Echo of Remnants where your lingering grenade duration are extended, Echo of Harvest where defeating a deep of target creates all the power and void breach, Echo of Undermining which provides users a 15% grenade debuff, and Echo Persistence, where Void buffs applied to you, are increased. And leaning into Child of Your Gods and Devour Effect, you want to slow the enemies down into small funnel-like shapes, so that we can both get a consistent Devour on hand, and also weaken them enough for Child of Your Gods Effect to fully kick in. With this in hand, it will allow us to trigger off Scorch much more easier when you place them in such funnel, and from there we can run and gun as much as we like without the fear of dying so much. This is why it's important to have the following fragments shown, as they will massively help with keeping you afloat, while also making you a powerhouse in the making. For the mods and stats section, we are mainly relying on discipline to help with doing the heavy lifting of the build. Because of the simple nature of the build, you don't need to be scoring high stats for the build to be functional, which in turn allows both new and older players to easily pick this up and improve whatever stats best suits you. For Discipline, we have ours at tier 7, and we'll be making use of the Font of Focus mod and Bomber mod to help with making regen more consistently. As Echo of Undermining allows us to debuff targets via grenades, it also comes with a hefty negative stat towards Discipline as well, which makes using the stat a bit of a hit and miss if you don't recover it properly. This was a problem before, but now, with thanks to Font of Focus available, we can get our stat to simply tier 7, and then use the plus 30 from focus mod to get an overall tier 10 for the given armor charges we have. This in turn means that we can use our vortex grenades more often, and also use it against bosses with devastating effects. If you plan to use your grenades more often with a different and faster grenade type, then I would advise you to have a primary weapon with demolitions on it. That, or simply adding on the distribution mod for a simple effect is also worth the cost. Recovery and Resilience can both be at around tier 6 to 7, as they will be used quite a bit. However, Recovery can be a bit higher considering that we are using Child of Your Gods as often as we can. Seasonal wise, we have Onto the Breach and Protected Breach that will not only give us a Void Breach which grants class energy back, but also will grant us an Overshield as well, while also having the Echo of Harvest available. This is more an option for those after Season Pass. Those that don't have the following pass, you just need to increase the following stat and debuff as many targets as possible for that extra void breach instead. A strength will also be used, but at tier 4 this is fine as Dawn Course effect will be giving us a 6.25% melee energy back in return for each course attack inflicted. After that, you are left with armor charges to deal with, so having charged up will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect normal power, and stacks and stacks will increase the overall amount of charges by 2 instead of 1. After that, having the Firepower, Reaper, and Solar Siphon mod will further help with creating all the power at a faster rate for us. All of this will be built into the Solar Weapon Surge mod times 2 which will provide a 17% damage boost for as long as we can keep our charges up and going. Combine that with the Time Dilation mod for that extra 5 seconds added on, and we can get a nice and steady rate of increased damage for Tommies, which is already getting a monstrous level of strength once overheated. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will be the Tommy's Matchbook Exotic AR. 
A simple and now even greater weapon you'd use if you really want to feel like you're on fire. The weapon is a hit and miss with a lot of the community, as that extra damage being done while overheated can make taking on mages to ultras with a primary a lot more effective compared to using your special instead. However, its self-inflicting burn damage it provides also makes the user more vulnerable if there is no level of precaution or safety implemented before using it. This makes the weapon more risky to use in most endgame and PvP content, as the cons outweigh the many pros it provides. It has however been buffed to now apply Scorch onto the target, which is huge, as this is inflicted the longer the weapon is damaging the target, and not just simply after a kill. This, along with Dawn Course for example, will enhance your damage more to the point of causing ignition blasts more often, without the need of a serial subclass. It becomes even better once you apply Devour to the mix as well, as this one con it had before becomes less and less of a problem over time. When it comes to using Tommy's matchbook, it is one of those weapons that are rare to see in most content, but very much welcoming with how simple and fun it is. Now that the weapon can apply Scorch on a target once you overheat, it allows the weapon to play a much more bigger role than what it was capable of doing before. Not only are you getting that standard damage increase the longer the weapon is being fired by the hip, but the added on Scorch effect allows players to easily build up Scorch damage onto a single target and trigger an ignition in the right environment. All of this from one weapon alone and nothing else added means that players can have a miniature Scorch and Ignite Exotic at hand that is 100% capable of triggering its serial effects no matter who you face. To make it feel even more exotic though, I have also added on the Dawn Chorus to increase this level of Scorch damage applied to targets, so one full magazine can trigger a ignition easily, and also utilising Devour Void on our end allows us to safely use the weapon without dying in the most obscene way. You have most likely seen Tommy's and Void Devour combo before, as it works out great for all users, and truth be told, using Solo would be better simply because of the extra bonuses you can gather. It's thanks to the new addition to the game that such a setup is incredible to use when you want to mix and match unique setups. Strongly, this build can work in a number of areas, from seasonal activities, nightfalls up to master, raids for certain encounters, strikes, gambit, battlegrounds, and PvP. However, when it comes to master raids or GMs, this build will pose a huge risk to users, even if you have Devour on. It's very much possible to use it in these environments as long as you play it smart, but most of these content enemies hit much harder than what Devourer can recover quickly. You also have the issue of a slow reload of the weapon, which in most situations can lead to life or death if you have no cover. The overall of the build is that if you enjoy run and gun builds and want to use scorching conditions a lot more often, but want a bit of survivability at the same time, then the following builds are going to be great for you. It packs a punch, you feel invincible using it, and the flexibility of the build pretty much means you don't need seasonal monsters to make it work. It's optional, and it's there, but you don't need them. But overall, what do you think of the build? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub ball here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I want more stuff like this than I have a player's available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.